with that, following up now in this uh, next video, we want to talk, expand a little bit more, and I want to talk about working with the type to do the expansion across columns. So you can always make like a subheader, you know, like this subhead right here where it says Rome on the early Middle Ages. We could always cut it out and make it its own separate text box, but it's in the middle of copy here and it's flowing in, in, in these and we don't want to pull it out. So we can do the same thing and make it span across and we, we want to talk about that a little bit and how to set it up. Also, I had showed you how to kind of do a down and dirty clipping path on here, but I want to show you the difference between a real clipping path and this kind of a down and dirty style. So let's try this again. So I'm going to bring, I have this pizza that I put over here. I'm going to bring it over. And now I'm going to bring in a different pizza. And this is the pizza. Uh, you'll notice when I build clipping paths on things, I like to name them. I like to name it with clipped. So that way that I know which one of these. So this is the original. And this is the image that's clipped. Okay. And it, it doesn't show you that it's clipped. So that's why I name it clip because even even though I know there's a clipping path on there, it's not going to show it to you. It shows you the whole image. So the only really way to know which one is the one, the right one, is if you change its name. So again, even when I get the gun, it's going to look the same. So I'm going to lay this down with my gun, the placement gun, and let go. And as you can see, when you drop it down, this is much cleaner than this one. So when we look at this one, you can kind of see some background in there. And, you know, I just kind of like smoothed it around. It doesn't really, you know, especially here, you know, it's, it's pretty ugly. But it was, like I said, it was kind of down and dirty. Get it done quickly. When I have the time, I go in Photoshop, and you can see the difference in the path that I have, it, it exactly cuts out the pizza, just the pizza. Okay, so same kind of thing. Um, I can do the same thing with this now that I have that clipping path. InDesign recognizes the path that I put on there in that file. Okay, it's it it's not really an effect. It's just kind of a, a path that's embedded into that image. So now when I set it, let's say I want to put this guy, oh, let's do the same kind of similar thing. Bring it up here, kind of coming in off the corner top, okay. And I want to put a clipping path. I come up to, or not a clipping path, a text wrap. I come up to the top, and I don't want to do text block, because text block is going to kick it all the way out here, like this, all the way down to the block. This text frame that it's, or not text frame, but the frame that the picture's in. I don't want that. I want this to do go around the object and the shape. So if I click that, so now I should have a, and you can kind of see it if you look right there. I'm getting a flow around, whoops, around that photograph. Okay. Now I can adjust that again right here, kind of globally, change it, make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I can really push the words off, okay? And it changes it globally. Can't really unlock that because it's in that mode because it's going all the way around that path. So I think that looks pretty good. Let me go one more up. Yeah, I'm going to come back down. I like it about right there. I think that's a pretty good flow. So this looks good right around here. I'll need to clean this up. You don't ever want to put meat consumption like that or this habit to eat meat. You know, you just, that looks horrible. So we're going to clean that up manually, okay? So, but that's how we put that clipping path on there. So let's, let's talk about some other adjustments. I want to do... Kind of this expanding, expanding across here. And let's let's talk about that. 
So I've got this guy. I'm going to pull these photos off. There we go. All right. I'm going to pull them off for now. And I've got this, this guy here. And I want him to span two columns. So let's see if we can work with it and make this happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a return on here. And I want to show you something. If I do a return, it just goes to the next line. Okay. If I hit the enter key on my keyboard, it should push this R all the way over to this next column like that. It reads it, sees, sees that, and kicks it over. If this was another page, if this was like the end of a page, it would kick it all the way over to the next page. So uh, an enter key kicks it all the way over to the next column. A return is just one line return. Okay, so I'm going to hit the enter and then kick it over. And from here, I'm, I'm going to tell it that I want to try to expand this across these two columns. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what it's going to do with these guys up here. I'm hoping it's going to shove this copy down, but let's find out. So the way I do that is I'm going to highlight exactly what I want to expand across these two columns, this column and this column. And then from here, again, I go up to my control bar up at the top, and I'm going to come all the way over here. And it, see how it kind of looks like a bridge, like, kind of like a like a tower bridge there. That's where I'm going to go. And right here it says none, or I can span all, or span two, or three, or whatever. Well, I've only got two, so I want it to span two. So I'm going to say span two, and let's see what happens. So it looks like it jumped it. So okay, so I know what's going on. So. It sees this, it won't manually shove it, so I'm going to have to shove it myself. Now, most of the words over here are gone, right? So most of this text block, it's not there. So if I want that to be able to span across, I need to grab this text box handle right here and slide it down. I'm not losing anything over the picture. It's already pushing those words out of the way. So I come and I bring it down, bring it down, bring it down. And now it should bring it back over. Yeah. And span across too. There you go. And we'll give it a little bit of elbow room. Right there. So now you can see it's spanning across these two columns. I can fill that space size up if I want to. Or I can leave it there. Rome in the early Middle Ages. Let's put a quick period on that. Okay. Hit a return. Well, that's interesting. Let's pull this back. There we go. So now we've got it and it goes across. So that's how we span into two columns. All right. And now we have this blank area up here. So we might want to add a piece of art maybe a quote that'd be a nice place for a quote so let's talk about putting up a quote okay so putting up a quote is pretty easy I'm just gonna look through here and I find somewhere on here something that you want to highlight what they might say so let's see here ah here we go this seems this seems like a good one right here of course we're talking about the jet set here, certainly not about the majority of people. Okay, so we're going to take this, we're going to get rid of, of course, I'm right there. I copy it. And this is something we wanted to highlight. So I jump back over here, the letter T. Create a new text box right here. Paste that into it. Now from here, I'm going to center my alignment. 
right? It was flush left, so it has a nice, this is flush left where it all lines up on here and you can see it's kind of raggedy on this side. That's centered and that's flush right. And that's justified, see how it makes bigger spaces when it's flush on the left and the right. That's kind of a rare one to use. So I'll go to the beginning. I'm now going to expand out my leading. Yeah, I want to make it even bigger. And I'll make my words bigger. Until you get it, that looks pretty good. To the size that you like. Let's pump it up. There, that's looking pretty good. Span it out. And that's pretty good for a quote. And of course, the quotes, you got to have quotes on either side. And you can leave it like that if you want. Or you can. Put it inside a box. Now I'm going to hide. I'm going to turn off. If, you ever, if that ever drives you crazy, all these blue lines everywhere, you just say hide, go to view, and come down to extras and say hide frame extras. And they go away. Now that's kind of nice. I like that there. That works for me. But I want to sample some of this color. And this, we've got a nice brown in here. So I'm going to come over here and get my eyedropper. And I'm going to pick, oh, kind of like this brown, cheesy color with it. Maybe there. Okay. Kind of a brown, crusty color. Now I get a box, and I'm going to build me a nice little box right here. And it's got that nice golden I picked up from that cheese. Send it to the back. Maybe, maybe we give it a, we screen it back so the color's not so intense. About a 60% like that. Yeah, not too bad. Something simple, nothing too crazy. Okay. And that way it keeps everything in a, in a nice, and it picks up the color from what we're doing over here to the right. So, Worked with clipping path. We worked with putting a, a quote in there. We've shuffled and done a span across. So we've covered quite a few things here. And I think you have enough tools that you can just kind of keep going and make the layout however you want it. Fill it up and make it look good. All right. Good luck with all that you're doing. Thank you for watching.